Coming up on this episode of Merc Cruiser MPI Suck, we're gonna try to be determining with some confidence if the high pressure fuel pump needs to be replaced. Let's get started. Now, if you wanna know why I'm leaning towards the high pressure fuel pump, you can go watch my other video, but don't do it now. I don't need you messing up the stats on this video. Do it after you watch this video. So I've got my fuel pressure gauge hooked up to the Schrader valve and I'm not gonna start the boat. I'm just gonna prime everything up. So I'm not gonna put the blower motor on. I'm just gonna turn the key a little. So right now we're sitting at 35 PSI. I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute or two. Make sure that the pressure gauge doesn't drop any more than that. So I just checked the other camera. The pressure got up to 40 PSI with the turning of the key. And it's been a good two or three minutes now and we're still at 30 PSI. So we don't have any leaks. Okay, so now we're gonna prime the pump again. We're gonna start it this time. All right, so it took a little bit to start, but the engine did start. And if we look, we're at 38 PSI. All right, so we got our vessel view running. We're running at 640, 650 RPM. We've got 50 pounds on the oil, and we've got 97 degrees Fahrenheit for the temperature. We'll let the boat warm up. So the engine's almost up at operating temperature. I'm gonna do two tests right now. I'm gonna remove the vacuum hose from the fuel pressure regulator, which should simulate the boat being underloaded. And we're gonna do that two different ways, one at idle and one with the RPM increased a little bit to see what happens to the fuel pressure. All right, so right now we're at 38 PSI and we just went up to about 41. So I just increased the RPM to just over 1300 and guess what? The fuel pressure on the rails already dropped to 35 PSI. Okay, so you can see there, with the RPM increase and then removing the vacuum off of the fuel pressure regulator, it did jump from 35 PSI back up to 40 PSI. Now we're gonna try one more test. All right, this boat has got the fuel supply module alpha on it. Don't ask me why, it's a Bravo engine and a Bravo drive. Merc Cruiser must have figured out that this is the better way to cool the fuel. So coming from there, from the pressure regulator in that magic box on the port side, there's a return back to the fuel water separator. So I'm gonna pinch that off to see what happens to the pressure on the rail. See what just happened there? So as I was crimping down on that return, that fuel pressure shot all the way up to like 80 or 90 PSI. Now, if that last test did anything, I think it eliminated the high pressure fuel pump from being an issue and not working with the spec. Now, one thing I've just realized is every time I go out, when I go to start up my boat, I'm hooked up at the dock. I'm hooked up to shore power. The battery charger's on, the refrigerator's running off of 120. I'm not running off the battery when I first start up. Fortunately, I've got solar, so I can simulate actually being hooked up to 120 while I'm out on the water. If you wanna see how we do that? You can watch the other video that I did, but not now. Now, the reason I'm even doing this test, I've realized that my house battery, my AGM, which is only four years old, seems to be a bit weak. So I wanna try eliminating that as an issue. So you can see, we've got our solar up here. We've got the boat hooked up via shore power and we're out on the water, but everything over here, this boat thinks it's running on 120 and still hooked up to shore power. So I'm not running any electronics right now. It's just me, the boat, and my vessel view hooked up on my iPhone. So let's give this a whirl. So I just went cruising down the good old Matitacock River and I still have the problem. So this one's really got my brain frazzled. My next plan of attack, disconnect every single electronic connection at the engine and spray it with a little CRC contact cleaner. I'm gonna check out the manifold air pressure and temperature sensor because I'm burning way too much fuel than I should be. Finally, I may try running off of a separate fuel tank, but that's a little hard to pull off single-handed. So if anybody's got any other suggestions, leave a comment down below. It's greatly appreciated. And until next time, Captain John from Nordisphere, out.